So prior to disassembling this engine, it's you know pretty much ice cold right now. I'm going to actually do a run, run it and get it up to operating temperature because I think that heat and the motion, the normal motion of the engine is enough to actually facilitate removal of that piston pin. So I'm going to do that, but after I run it, I'm going to have to operate pretty quickly to get this thing off, get this thing disassembled before it cools down. But many times you can just feel and just hear that there's bad bearings. I mean, there's just something about the way this flips over and sounds and feels that it wasn't that obvious before I ran it the other day because there was still it was still pretty stuck. I won't say it was stuck, but it was tighter. After my run, I liquefied all the oil that was inside the engine and loosened things up and now you can just feel that there's some bearings that need to be replaced, at least crankshaft bearings. So I'm going to do a run with this real quick, get it up to operating temperature, then I think that will be all that's necessary to get that piston pin out very easily. Okay, prior to disassembling my OSFS40 Surpass engine, I just want to show just the tools that I'm going to use to actually get this job done. There's not a whole lot. There's a couple of, uh, both of these L-shaped hex wrenches are the same size as these. I think uh, they're pretty worn, but I think one's a 2 millimeter and one's a 2.5 millimeter. I've got a box end or open end wrench here just to take the exhaust off, uh, flat bladed screwdriver to remove the carb and a couple of picks to help me grab the uh, piston pin once I get to that point. The only thing I don't have here shown is a popsicle stick or a piece of wood, wood dowel or something to help me push to the piston or the cylinder sleeve out. But I'll find one of those and that's what I'll utilize to disassemble this engine. Okay, my engine just came off the stand. I don't have a glove, but I'm gonna make do here. I'm gonna try and make fairly quick work of disassembling this because I don't want it to lose the temperature. Yes, this is all very warm. Now, I'm not anticipating seeing a gasket on this. And I don't. Uh, like I said, I'm doing this pretty quickly because I don't really want to lose the, the heat that I've got in this engine. I may end up having to heat it up some more just to get that sleeve out. We'll see. Got to make sure you get full engagement to break these things loose. Last thing you want is to strip a head out. Okay. Now the only thing I don't have with me right here is a magnet. Get those push rods out. But
So this engine, in theory, had 50 flights on it. So it'll be interesting. You can already see how much carbon buildup, if we can assume that that's correct, if the person was correct in their assessment, the seller, 50 flights. Well, it'll be interesting to see what the top of the piston looks like after theoretically 50 flights. Because I know a four-stroke engine typically doesn't carbon up the top of the piston nearly as fast as a two-stroke does. Engine already feels like it's cooling down. Okay, so there, if, if we can believe it, there's 30 or 50 runs. Here's what the underside looks like. I'm not going to completely get into a whole bunch of this stuff right now. I just want to see if I can get this piston pin out. Because that's the most critical part of this video, really, for educational purposes, is just to prove that operating the engine and getting it up to operating temperature, in addition to the movement, the motion, is the key thing in facilitating an easy piston pin removal. If you're not able to get the engine up to running, moving, then I'd say you're going to have a lot more difficult time with this. So here I've got a stick. I don't know if that's going to... Okay, there. Here's my popsicle stick. You can see where that hole right here has been sitting all those years. Uh, let's see here. Just for the heck of it, let's just see if we can pull that off. Wouldn't it be funny if I'm making this video just to show how to do this and you could just pull it right off. See, I can get it like 90% of the way, but not really all the way. So now is when I'm going to use a pick Or a screw, which unfortunately I'm not prepared. I don't have a screw with me. <sighs> Looks like I'm gonna have to go try and find one here real quick because I think that's what's gonna be required here. Okay, so I've got a servo screw screwed in here. It screws into that plastic or rubber or not rubber but plastic bushing that acts as a guide. It looks like I've lost too much heat because it's not just coming right out. So what happened is is that little guide came out and the pin did not come out so I've lost too much heat so now I'm gonna to have to resort to the same old thing we always used to have to do here Look at that. I was actually able to get it off without removing that pin. That's a very interesting thing. I mean, I guess that can happen too. Although I've not seen it happen very often. But, as you saw, it did just happen. Now.